What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. Chelsea nil, Tottenham nil. After all that hype, after all that build-up, after all that anticipation for this big London derby between second place and third place and the winner was going to go for first place and both teams were going to leave it all out there. It's going to be blood, sweat and tears and hopefully one team would come out at the end with the three points. No, we're all stupid to think that. We're all so dumb to think that. In hindsight, I don't know what we expected with Jose Mourinho coming to Stamford Bridge, a tough top six away ground, especially for Tottenham Hotspur, and expecting us to have an open game of football between two attacking sides. Hindsight, that is ridiculously, that is ridiculously dumb. This result is exactly what we should have expected. Chelsea nil, Tottenham nil. Such an anticlimactic ending to this week, but whatever, we moved, we didn't lose. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not anything too bad, but we're going to delve into this game. We're going to go through the player ratings as well towards the end of the video. So before I start this video, as usual, if you like to hit that like button, press that subscribe button. If you want to get a hat trick as well, because no one else scored today, please press that bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And yeah, let's go straight into this video i hope the mic is protecting this echo this is the reason why i'm recording on Streamyard and not on my camera as well because i'm hoping the mic catches my voice a little bit more but let me know if there's an echo i'm sorry but yeah chelsea versus spurs lineup came out not too much changes uh other than yeah it's more or less the same lineup we expected it's the same lineup from the last premier league game that we had and spurs had the same lineup from the manchester city game and Going into the first half, I thought the only thing we need to worry about is making sure we don't concede first. Uh, one thing I was worried about was conceding an early goal to Jose Mourinho's Spurs because as soon as they get what they've come for, which is the lead, they're just going to sit back and protect it. And try break down the second season Jose's side. i like to see you try because our best was our best. And you know what? We didn't play bad today. That's the first thing I want to say. We didn't play terribly. I thought we had a good performance. I think both teams played very defensive football. I think we were trying to play defensive just so we didn't leave too many players up, fo up forward and leave ourselves prone to a counter-attack because that was just playing right into Jose Mourinho's hand. He, Jose Mourinho wanted to sit deep. He wanted us to commit too many bodies forward, get too frustrated, get too complacent, and then he hits us. Then he hits us with a deadly counter-attack and that's where we would have been at our most vulnerable, which is why even, even with the way the second half went, I'm okay with us playing that defensive mindset because we needed to play the smart game, not the easy, quick game of whoever scores first because that's, again, exactly what Jose Mourinho wants. We needed to play a slow game and for the most part, it worked. It was a typical Jose shithouse at the end of the day, but Jose Mourinho didn't need the win. We needed the win. If we won, we would have gone to first place. It Spurs just didn't need to lose and they would have gone to first place as well. And that's exactly what happened in this game. So I understand from Jose's point of view, as annoyed as, annoyed as I am by the way the game's gone, I'm not annoyed at Jose. We're Chelsea fans. We know exactly what Jose Ball is like. We've won countless Premier League titles doing it. We knew he was going to come to the ground and play the source style of play. The question was, were we going to try to break them down? And we could have. I mean, we did have our chances. We didn't really do much of them. I mean, credit to Tammy Abraham for continuing to disrespect Reese James's crosses. Because seriously, Reese James should have had an assist or two at the start of the second half. There was two inch perfect crosses that went straight to his head. And the connection just wasn't there. It was frustrating. It was so frustrating. But uh, that's the only negatives I could have with the way the team was played. I'll speak on Frank Lampard and the substitutes in a little bit. But the game plan I am happy with. We, were, we played a defensive style of play, but we nullified Son, we nullified Kane. They had barely any impact on the game this entire match. They were both kept nicely in our defensive back pocket. So in the grand scheme of things, it worked. We're not leaving with a loss. So I'm not going to look too much into it. It's just, I do think we could have won with better chance creation if we took our chances more. The Olivier Drew chance at the end, I'm not going to take too much into it. He, he was thinking off the cuff just based off the mistake by the Spurs defender. So... You could easily say, yeah, I wanted him to go around the goalkeeper, but like you can't really think that in the moment. You're just going to go wherever you can. He tried to take it down, and it was easy for Lloris. Spurs were also brilliant defensively. When you stick 10 men behind the ball, you are going to be that good defensively. But they were good, and they were smart as well. They kept attacking Ziyech quiet. 
they made it really hard for Tammy Abraham, especially in the first half. I don't think Abraham's first half performance was all that bad. He just got swarmed by Spurs players whenever they tried to deliver a cross in. But in the second half, he really should have put the ball into the back of the net. Only other issue I did have, I do think those substitutions could have been quicker from Frank Lampard. And th this is a recurring pattern. It's, it's reminding me a bit of Antonio Conte. Frank Lampard loves these late subs and he's been a bit too cautious with them. The subs were correct. Bringing on Havertz was fine. Bringing on Pulisic was fine. Would have maybe wanted to keep on Werner, but because he played the full 90 against Renz, I understand that with Sevilla coming up as well. But they all feel like they could have happened 10 or 20 minutes earlier and we could have had a much more better impact off those subs as a result. Kai Havertz came on with eight minutes left. Pulisic came on with 12 minutes left. Olivier Drude came on in the 75th minute or something like that, or the 70th minute. But regardless, he could have come on at half time. And I mean, if he did, we might have been one or two in the luck. Because if he gets on the end of those crosses, we know exactly where it's going. The back of the net. So that's the only two issues that I had. But other than that, I thought we played well. I thought Kante had an amazing performance. Kovacic was brilliant. Silva was brilliant. Reese James dominated that right-hand side yet again. Ben Chilwell, I thought, was solid. I thought our whole defence was good. The only issue was uh, we could have taken our chance a bit more in the second half. But this was a game of mindsets. This was a game of attrition. It was going to be a game of whoever made the mistake first. I said plenty of times I did think this was going to be a 1-0 game. I'd be surprised if we saw more than one goal, even though I did want to see a 2-0 win. It would be a massive surprise if we saw that happening. But yeah, it ends nil-nil. I mean, we're not going to complain too much in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, let's roll straight through these player ratings. I'm going to start off in goal with Edouard Mendy. Solid performance. I mean, he barely had much to deal with. I don't think Spurs had a shot on target in that entire second half. But he was most important when it came to catching crosses, especially with the corners and everything. So I'll give him a six. He didn't really have much to do. But again, when he came out and he needed to do his job, he did it well. So good performance from him. Reese James, I'm going to give an eight potential for man of the match. Again, his crosses have been so disrespected throughout the entirety of 2020. We really need to... Sorry, I've got these mad hiccups going on, but you got to allow me. We really need to start stop disrespecting Reese James's crosses like this. Because the amount of times he whips in an inch-perfect cross and no one's there on the end of it, or the connection's just laughable. We really need to start respecting his crosses more. But it was an amazing performance from him. Defensively, I thought he was very solid as well. I think he escaped a booking, which I can't really say for most of Chelsea defence too. But it was a good performance from him. I'm going to give him an 8. Uh, moving on to Thiago Silva. And it was another strong co and composed performance from him. Good, A lot of turnovers from possession from Thiago Silva nicking the ball off them and trying to stop them in their transitions. He was unlucky with the passing. They used a lot more short passes than long passes, but Spurs had everyone sat deep, so it didn't make sense anyway. But another solid performance from him. I'm going to give him a seven. Kurt Zuma, strong performance as well, even though this guy nearly handed them the game in the 93rd minute by passing the ball straight into Jungmin Son. Thank God La Celso missed all four of the options in front of him because if Spurs got a 93rd minute winner, things are getting smashed. I don't care if this is my flat or not. Things are getting broken. But strong performance, even though that jammy mistake nearly cost us the game. I'm tempted to drop him to a six. I'm dropping him to a six just for that mistake. I don't care. It's my channel. Ben Chilwell. Struggled to beat the first man a lot, but I do feel like his responsibilities were more defensive than attacking. I thought defensive, he was very good. So I'm going to give him a seven. Uh, who's next? N'Golo Kante, another dominant performance. Snuffed out any transitions from defense to attack all over that midfield and defensive third. He was excellent today. Thank God also Spurs are another team that don't press us because it played perfectly into N'Golo Kante's hand. It was an amazing performance from him again. I'm going to give N'Golo Kante a set. Uh, it's not seven, an eight. Who else are we going to go for? Mason Mount. Let's go for Mason Mount. Best attacking chances came from him. This guy was really unlucky not to end with a goal. He had an amazing performance today. Um, gave the Spurs defence a lot of problems and was all over the pitch just like N'Golo Kante was. I like the switches of play from him too, so I'm going to give him a seven. Mateo Kovacic gets a seven as well. Really hard to stop when he starts getting into the mood when he's in the middle of a dribbling sequence. Again, also solid all around the park. I'm going to give him a seven. Nice ball progression from him today. Tammy Abraham really should have scored. If not the first chance, definitely the second chance. And I think that was starting to get onto his head because his game really started to deteriorate as the second half progressed. 
Gonna have to give him a four. Sorry, not sorry. But we're gonna move on to Timo Werner. Unlucky with the offside goal. Um, other than that, I thought he tried to create as many problems as he could, but he was really stifled by the, by the amount of Spurs players that they had in the box. It made it really hard for him to try and get into his best, but I thought he tried. Like, I can appreciate effort, and the effort was there for him, so I'm going to give him a six and a half. Hakim Ziyech, last player in the starting 11. Doubled up by Spurs a lot, really struggled to have the same sort of impact they had in previous games. I thought Spurs handled him excellently in that match. Not really his fault, though, and I still think he tried to keep himself around the game, so I'm going to give him a five. Olivier Giroud, unlucky not to score, but other than that, not really too much impact, so we'll give him a five. Kai Havertz, barely any impact, so I'm not going to give him a rating. And Christian Pulisic, just again, in and around, but didn't really have enough time. We really should have done earlier subs. But guys, this is the end of my review, plus player ratings. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. I wish this game had a better ending. But until then, take care. Up the chat.